Sir Desmond Sway. Madam Deputy Speaker, this House legislated explicitly for specific arrangements to govern the celebration of Christmas. And no sooner than the House had risen itself for Christmas than the government by ministerial fiat changed those arrangements. And we are asked this evening now to give retrospective legislative approval to the changes that they made. We are in the absurd position of being asked to vote for the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> Sometimes in a democracy, process has an importance. Now, I am constantly, daily, confronted by individuals and businesses facing ruin, notwithstanding the huge investment that they made in COVID-secure premises and procedures. And what we have never had, and what we've always been asking for, is the cost-benefit analysis that the government made in, on each of the restrictive measures that make up the menu of their tier system. I don't for one moment question the motives of ministers. I do, however, question their ability in exactly the way that I question my own ability. Now, when the House rose, the lobby of government scientific advisers, a lobby we should remember that had already publicly expressed their frustration that their earlier strictures on how Christmas should be celebrated had not been fully taken on board uh, by the government. But that lobby announced that they had discovered a new strain of the disease so much more transmiss transmissible uh, than the earlier one. They bounced the government. Now, I have to accept, of course, the possibility that they may be absolutely right. But I know this, that were I presented by such a lobby of eminent scientists, eminent people leading in their field, and told that they had discovered this new emergency and that so many more people were going to die and unless I did what they said, I would be responsible for their deaths. I know that I would find great difficulty in having the wherewithal to identify and ask the right questions to be sure that they were on the money or a hundred miles from it. And what I would certainly want, and what I believe the government needs, is an alternative source of expertise, a competitive source of expertise, particularly statisticians leading in their fields, who would be able to furnish me, to arm me, to arm ministers, with the right questions to ask about the validity of their modelling and their data. It can only improve the decision-making process. But what is really galling in all this is then to hear out on the airwaves Professor Ferguson being interviewed, giving his wisdom to the nation once again, to all intents and purposes, as if he was still a key government advisor. I do hope that the minister winding up the debate will be able to assure us that that is most certainly not the case. Now, I was always rather jealous of Poole, Christchurch and Bournemouth because, you know, the, the reality is that our uh, infection rate in the New Forest was substantially lower than theirs, but they turned out to be in Tier 2 and we were in Tier 3. Now we're all together in Tier 4. And my constituents... Indeed. He's absolutely right to say we are now in Tier 4, but the, on the statutory instrument 1646, which was laid before this House on the 29th of December, we were in Tier 2. Now, today, one day later, we are in Tier 4. Isn't that a mockery? Reality is this. These are the questions that my constituents put to me. And I, I'm reduced to saying it's one of life's great mysteries. The, the decision-making process in, is entirely opaque. That's why I voted against it when I had the chance. Yeah, yeah. 